Hello friends and welcome to Tutorials Point yet again. Well, we have learned quite a lot about grammar, right? And now we want to understand as to how do we actually get all the grammar into picture while we are speaking or while we are conveying whatever we want to through whatever mode, right? So during, uh, you know, this process of when we are communicating with others in English language, we might want to portray whatever we are saying in different ways, right? We might want to portray it actively, which means which is a strong voice and direct message, or else we might want to portray it passively. So when we are portraying it passively, it means it's not as strong as the active voice and it's not as direct, right? So there are these are two different ways in which we can, you know, convey the message that we want to to the listener. Basis, however, we want to portray whatever, like whatever is the tonality of that you are saying. Uh, basis that we can decide whether we want to, uh, you know, convey it in an active voice or in passive voice, right? So now, now that we know that these, uh, you know, active and passive voice are two different ways or two different tonalities of conveying our messages. So let's go ahead and study about them so that we can judge and decide as to where we can use active voice and where we can use passive voice. Okay. So what is, uh, you know, first of all, um, now that of course we have a slight idea about active and passive voice. So what is actually active voice? Let's first read about it. Now, now here uh, we'll, uh, you know, you might come across certain uh, technical terms, which of course I will explain you. But for now, just look at what the definition says. When the subject of a sentence performs the verb's action, we say that the sentence is in the active voice. Now, first of all, of course, reading this, you understood that subject is performing the action or the verb, right? But who is the subject? What is the subject in a sentence, right? What is the role of subject in uh, this entire conversation? So what is the subject in a sentence? So here, now, subject is someone who is actually performing the action in the sentence. Or in other words, you can say that, you know, the entire conversation is centered around the subject, right? Because the subject is the one, be it a, a you know, a thing or a place or a, uh, or a human being or whatever you want to, uh, you know, basis the, the context of the sentence. But subject is the one who is performing the action. So whenever, you know, when, whenever it's the subject who is uh, performing the action, you know, in that entire process, if you convey, if uh, a message is conveyed in the form of subject performing the action, it is then that you say that it is an active voice, right? So here, now sentences, as I already told you, in active voice are strong, direct, uh, and they have a clear tone. Now, first of all, now that I've told you what a subject is, just look at an example. Now here, monkeys adore bananas. So here, this entire conversation is about monkeys, right? So monkeys adore bananas. So monkeys are the subject. Adore, what is adoring? Adore is, of course, a verb, right? So monkeys adore bananas. So adore is the verb and bananas is the object. So what, what did you understand from this example? What exactly do you think is an object? Now, subject you already know is the person or the thing who is performing the action. Now, what is a banana? What is a, um, what is a subject? What is the object? Now, object here is the banana, right? So, you from here you can understand that object in a sentence is you know a a, a thing or a uh, or a person or a place or whatever on whom the action is being performed, right? So here, monkeys who are the objects here, who monkeys, you know, we are, we are considering them as the subject here. So monkey who is the subject here is are adoring the bananas. So adore is the verb, monkey is your subject and bananas are the object because the action is being performed on the bananas, right? So did you observe this? Uh, pattern of SVO. So this is how it is in an active voice, which means that active voice always and invariably follows the SVO rule. So which is subject, verb and 
object rule which means that whenever you convey something directly uh, you know in the form of an active voice it will follow this pattern or this rule of sub first you have the subject then you have the verb and then in the end you have the object so now you are clear what is the subject and object in a sentence right subject is performing the action whereas object is a thing on which or on whom the action is being performed right so of course basis this your active voice which is clear and direct follows the svo rule right okay now here of course now we know what is the subject and what is the object now here look at an example the cashier counted the money so here who who performed the action of counting the money it was the cashier right so cashier here again is your subject now counting money is the work that is done right so here this is your verb whereas the object is the thing or person or uh, you know whatever is according whatever it is according to the context is the one on whom or on which the action is being performed so here cashier counted the money so money here is your object so again you have the svo rule which of course it is in accordance with uh, with uh, your svo rule right another example the dog chased the squirrel so here again the dog is your subject and dog did the work of chasing the squirrel so here chased is your verb and squirrel is your object because that is the thing on which the action was being performed right so squirrel is here acting as your object so now this i i i am sure this is very clear to you that your active voice always follows your svo rule which is subject verb and object rule and by now of course i'm sure you're also clear as to what is subject and what is an object in a sentence so two things that you need to register in your mind mind is that your active voice is always direct strong and clear and second thing is that active voice always follows your svo rule i think this is uh, we are good to go ahead and now learn about passive voice right so let's go ahead okay now what is your uh, you know passive voice now you already understood right whenever um, a sentence is in an active voice it is very strong and direct right so that is uh, you know that is a condition wherein your subject is performing the action you so your subject is central right but what about passive voice it's completely opposite to your active voice now see a sentence is in passive voice on the other hand when the subject is acted on by the verb so here what is uh what is happening your subject is not the center right so here the subject is acted on by the verb so it's completely opposite so in your active voice your object was being acted upon right but here your subject is being acted upon so now now forming passive now uh, first let just just see an example there you um, in your active voice what was the example that i gave you it was monkeys adore bananas right so here bananas are adored by monkeys so here again if you uh, you know understand and if you uh, see this it's uh, so you will of course you will you will realize that here your subject is not central your subject is slightly sidelined whereas your object is uh, you know what is in a strong position so here bananas are adored by monkeys so the message that both uh, you know the sentences inactive and passive respectively uh, which uh, is being portrayed is the same but did you understand the way in which it was put forward in your active voice it was way too direct right and way too clear and strong but here it's not so it's completely opposite so your bananas are adored by monkey so it's uh, you know it's portrayed in a way wherein it's uh, your your subject is no more the central point right or the money was counted by the cashier right 
or the squirrel was chased by the dog so here though uh, you know the work um, this thing your the work which is done or the work that you are conveying is the same but now the tonality has changed now the way in which you are conveying it has completely changed now it's moved from being an active and direct message to being a passive message so you see the difference in the way uh, you know it's being portrayed now of course um, so there we learned it's about your subject uh, you know um, verb and object rule is uh, what is the central right now here something that is very important for us to gauge whether a sentence is an active voice or it is in uh, specifically if it is in passive voice is that whenever you are writing a sentence in passive voice it will invariably have a b form of the verb right so what is b form of the verb so which are these are different ways right or different forms of b so they could be b am is are was were been and being so you will invariably see one of these words in a sentence whenever it is in a passive voice of course first thing is that you will understand whenever you read you'll it's it'll directly you know click your mind this is not direct so if it is not direct it is passive now add it to that how will you confirm so here you'll always see b form of the verb right which is which uh, here if you see are b am is are was were and being so one amongst these words will definitely be there and once you see it of course now that you are double sure that it is in passive voice now look at this bananas are adored by monkeys so here you have b form of a verb right same goes the money was counted or the squirrel was chased so you have b form of a verb here and of and of course your uh, it is not direct so now you are so sure you are absolutely sure it is not your uh, active voice anymore it is your passive voice right of course now that i've already told you that passive voice is used when we want to emphasize that the action and the object of a sentence ra now we already know right so what what does your uh, you know your passive voice emphasize on it doesn't emphasize on your subject rather it emphasizes on the action and the object right so it's clear i think so these two points are uh, i think more than important kind of a uh, you know tick mark uh, you know activity or check uh, points for you how do you gauge whether it is inactive or in passive voice is first that you know your subject is not going to be central anymore and second thing is that it will invariably have a b form of a verb right so these two things once you see them and once you realize it's no more direct it's not direct at all so it's i think you will very easily gauge and understand that yes this is in passive voice right okay now let's see a few example so that you are you are more clear about it i ate the strawberry so of course the subject is performing the action and it is your svo so what is it it is in your active voice now when the same thing comes in a passive voice how do we write it the strawberry pie was eaten by me so here your subject is no more central it's not central anymore right so your subject verb agreement rule is definitely being violated it's being changed into object verb and subject it's completely been violated and of course it has a, a b form of a verb as well well it has was in it right so now what is it difficult very easy to understand and to gauge and decide yes it is in passive voice now, i bought a honda car a honda car was bought by me right the sun rises from east east is where the sun rises from or for that reason rima can do skydiving skydiving can be done by rima right so these are a few examples for you to contrast and understand as to while you are converting or while you are trying to guess or gauge which amongst um, the sentences are in active or passive voice i think these are checkpoints and um, now i think it should become very seamless and easy for you to understand and um, decide that okay now how do you convert now converting is um, next you know kind of a, of course a kind of a practice question which you usually will encounter whenever you are doing or studying this topic is how do you how are you going to convert active into passive now there are a certain uh, you know f uh, rules which you need to follow to do that so here what is the first thing that you need to do 
exchange the place of the subject and the object of course while uh, when you read a particular sentence you will be able to uh, gauge and you will be able to understand which is the subject and which is the object right so first thing that you need to do is exchange their positions so look at an example she bought a new car right so she is your subject a new car is the object right bought is your verb so svo rule right now you are exchanging the position a new car was bought by her clear so your object and your action are now becoming central whereas your subject is being sidelined right okay now convert the main verb into its past participle or third form while converting from active to passive voice now there's the second thing that you're going to do now here bhanu wrote a book on gun violence so here bhanu is your subject and root is your verb right now what are you going to do you're going to convert your verb bases the context you're going to convert it into past participle or third form now what is past participle it is the the ed form of the verb right the past when you when you write it in the past form or else you can you have to bases the context you have to write it in, in the third form right now here a book on gun violence was written by bhanu so here written is your third form it's not past participle right what's yeah here so written is your third form so you converted it bases the context right okay use the word by before the subject in the passive sentence which i think will automatically and seamlessly happen uh, of course now look at this my my brother sang a song so a song was sung by my brother you convert it into the past form and now of course by you will definitely need why why will you need by because then you have to show right because bef when it was an active voice you didn't need by as much why because there the uh, it was very direct you were directly portraying the work that was done but here it is not direct it is indirectly you have to portray you cannot change the uh, you know the paraphrase uh, when you paraphrase the sentence you cannot change the main uh, context of the sentence right the meaning has to be the same you're just paraphrasing it now while you're paraphrasing the work which was done by the subject will be done by the subject only but the only uh, you know only the way in which you are portraying is is going to change so in your passive also the work is done by the subject only but now that you have to portray it uh, you know in a less direct way so you will invariably need by right so a song was sung by my brother or for that reason a book on gun violence was written by bhanu right or um, a new car was bought by her so here again you will need by because you know the subject the nature of subject is not going to change the person who was doing the work or the thing which was doing the work in your active voice will obviously do the work in your passive voice also but then how will you portray it when you're not saying it directly you need by for that right so now you understood the logic and concept behind it right another thing i think uh, which i'm sure you all have observed here is your tense is not changing you're not going to change the tense of the sentence it has to be the same because as i told you from active to passive or passive to active is just paraphrasing you're not changing the basic crux of the sentence these basic things have to be there just that you know the the um, what do you say the semantics is changing the way in which you're portraying is changing or the tonality is changing but your your uh, crux is the same so your tense form should not change while you are converting from active to passive or passive to active right okay now we have done active to passive now what about passive to active that also uh, not it's not uh, you know very very frequently asked but yes of course if you are aware of this topic then you should be able to articulate this also so now let's study about it now identify so the first thing invariably has to be you have to identify the subject and the object whether you are uh, you know doing active or passive or passive to active or whatever because subject and subject and object are the main central uh, pillars of this entire concept of active and passive right so first thing that you're going to do is 
identify the subject of the sentence of course who is the subject who is doing the task so once you identify it then now in your passive what was happening your subject was it, um, you know it wasn't directly uh, we we didn't portray it in a way that it is directly performing right so here what you're going to do is then you're going to make it direct now here when it was in passive voice reading is enjoyed by mary right so now what now we when we made it direct we completely exchanged the position now you now you are directly portraying the work which is done by the subject so in passive you weren't doing that it was completely it was indirect right so mary enjoys reading right the town was destroyed by fire now fire destroyed the town right it you made it very direct and it's very easy in your passive to act up probably which is why it's not very very frequently asked because it's very easy um so but um, now now that we are covering that it we should be you know aware of this also the room will be cleaned by john every saturday john will clean clean the room every saturday direct cheese was eaten by sara sara the cheese so so on and so forth i think now you um, i'm sure are able to gauge how are you going to direct from uh, how are you going to convert from active to passive or passive to active um so i think now let's go ahead and practice a few questions just to be double sure that you are actually clear of what you've studied yeah okay now i did not beat her first of all is it an active or an passive voice of course it is an active voice right so how are you going to convert it i did not beat her she was not beaten by me right the police have caught the thief the thief has been caught by the police the cake was made by mother yesterday mother made a cake yesterday she has learned her lessons her lessons have been learned by her uh before we proceed ahead uh the, the a cake was made by mother yesterday so was it an active or an passive of course it was in passive right because it was not direct it was indirectly uh, you were portraying the work that was done by the subject right okay uh, the deer was being chased by the tiger again um, active or passive of course it is passive right that's what you're answering yes you're absolutely right so now what is the answer the tiger was being chased um, the deer was being chased by the tiger the tiger was chasing the deer a novel has been written by her right a novel has been written by her again active or passive yes you're right it is passive now how do you convert it she has written a novel simple and clear right so i don't think uh, it is any more a big problem for you uh, to convert from active to passive and vis a vis so now we are good to go right i'm sure about it so here your answers are ready for you as usual and as always for your practice we will see you again in the next video till that time keep learning with tutorials point and tutorials have a good day